Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to look at lesson 6.5, day 2, on multiplying polynomials with the FOIL method. Our essential question for today is how do you multiply two polynomials using the FOIL method? Back in 6.5, day 1, we learned how to multiply two polynomials using the box method. The FOIL method is just another way to do the same thing. When it comes to your homework and tests in this class, you can pick the method that makes the most sense to you. So if you really like the box method from 6.5 day one and you're good at that, you can use that on all of your homework problems for 6.5 day two and on your test for chapter six. In this video, I'm mainly going to focus on the FOIL method because I want you to see the other way to do it, but just know that it's okay when you're doing these problems independently later on your assignment to do all the problems with the box method if that method makes the most sense to you. If you like the FOIL method, you can use the FOIL method. And if you like both, you can switch back and forth between the methods. So let's go ahead and get started. Another way to multiply two binomials is to use the FOIL method. FOIL is an acronym. The letters stand for first, outer, inner, and last, and that refers to the order in which we multiply the terms. So in this example here, the first is like the first part of the first binomial and the first part of the second binomial. So that's my 2x times my 4x, which is 8x squared. Then my outer is the outside of each, so that's 2x and negative 5. They're on the outside of the polynomials. And then our inner is the two that are on the inside right here in the green. And then our last would be the last part of each polynomial, so 3 times negative 5. So the FOIL method is kind of like doing the distributive property two different times. So it's like on your first attempt, or on your first multiplication, you're just distributing the 2x times the 4x, then 2x times negative 5, and that gives you your first two terms, 8x squared minus 10x. Then you distribute the 3. So 3 times 4x to make the 12x, and 3 times negative 5 to make the negative 15, and then we combine like terms. Again, you don't have to use the FOIL method. If you're good at the box method and you like that method better, you can stick with it. So let's try an example. And in this video, I am going to show you guys FOIL just to give you some exposure to that. Remember, when you're doing your assignment, though, you can pick whichever method makes the most sense to you. So for the FOIL method, we want to start by taking the first term of the first binomial times the first term of the second binomial. That's my f in FOIL. So here we have an x times a 2x. And I'm going to write this one out all the way. Then my outer is the 2 on the outer edge of both polynomials, so kind of furthest to the outside. And that is the x times the 5. Then we move to the bottom and we do our inners. So that's going to be negative 3 times 2x. And finally, I do my lasts, which is negative 3 times 5. Then we can simplify each of those products. x times 2x makes 2x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. And negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Now we just have to combine our like terms together. 5x minus 6x can go together. 5 minus 6 is negative 1x. But remember, when we have a negative 1 in front of x, we can also just write that as minus x. So for my final answer, let's write it as 2x squared minus x minus 15. And again, if you did this with the box method, you would end up with the same answer. I just want to focus on FOIL in this video to give you another method. When you do these problems alone, you can pick the method that makes the most sense to you. Here's another example, and I'm again going to do my FOIL method, but this time I'm not going to write out all of my intermediate steps. I'm just going to do the multiplication right here. So x squared times 3x ends up being 
3x to the third. x squared times x makes x to the third. Remember that x there has an exponent of 1, and when we add 2 plus 1, we get 3. Then let's move to our outsides. So that's x squared times negative 7, and that's negative 7x squared. Then we move to our insides. So negative 4x times 3x would be negative 12x squared. And finally, for my last, I have negative 4x times negative 7, which is positive 28x. Then we want to see if there's any like terms. Here we have a negative 7x and a negative 12x. Those are alike terms. We can put them together to make negative 19. So the final answer then would be 3x cubed minus 19x squared plus 28x. Here is a quick try now problem for you to try on your own. You can find the product here using either the FOIL method that I just went over or if you're more comfortable with the box method and you think you're probably going to want to stick with that method for multiplying binomials, you could also do the box method. The thing I want is I just want you guys to get the right answer. So if you think you're more likely to get the right answer by making a box, go right ahead and make a box. If you're comfortable with FOIL, go ahead and FOIL. So you pick your method. Please pause your video now and give this problem a try. Then when you hit play again, I'll have the solution posted. Pause the video. Here is your solution using the FOIL method. 8a times 8a is 64a squared. 8a times negative 6 is negative 48a. Then moving to our insides, 2a or 2 times 8a is 16a. And 2 times a negative 6 is a negative 12. Then we just combine our like terms together and end up with 64a squared minus 32a minus 12. Remember, it's okay too if you did this with the box method. Here I showed my work with the box method where I put 8a plus 2 on the top of my box and 8a minus 6 on the side of my box. You can see that after I circle up my like terms of 16a and negative 48a and combine those to negative 32a, we do end up with the exact same answer. So when you're doing the problems, feel free to use the method that makes the most sense to you. If you like the box method, you'll still get the same answer as you would if you used FOIL. Now let's move on to a couple special cases. We originally talked about these special cases in 6.5 day one. 3x plus 5 times 3x minus 5. This is an example of a product of a sum and a difference, where everything's the same between these two, but one has a plus sign in the middle and one has a minus sign in the middle. Here, this follows this pattern right here. So I have a plus b times a minus b. I can see my a is 3x and my b is 5. So if we follow the pattern for the shortcut formula, we would get a squared minus b squared. And then I can just plug in my numbers. a squared is going to be 3x squared minus b squared, which is 5 squared. And then remember when you're squaring these things, 3x squared means 3x times 3x. So that's going to be 9x squared. And then 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. So we end up with 9x squared minus 25 as our final answer. Now, it would also be fine, too, if you just did this problem with FOIL or with a box. I'm going to show it with FOIL here. If you want to do it with a box, you can do it with a box, too, and you'll still arrive at the same answer. So for FOIL, I just have to follow my pattern. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x. Then move to the inners. 5 times 3x is positive 15x. And 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. Then you can see that the negative 15x and the positive 15x cancel out. That makes 0. So I'm left with just 9x squared minus 25. The same answer that you get with the formula. Now again, if you made a box with sides 3x plus 5 and 3x minus 5, you'd also end up with that same answer. 
Now let's look at a square of a binomial. Remember that 2x minus 7 squared just means 2x minus 7 times 2x minus 7. So without even knowing the special case formula, we could just use the FOIL method there or set up our box method. Actually, let's FOIL this one out first, and then I'll show you the formula. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Then 2x times negative 7 is negative 14x. Then I'm going to move to my insides. Negative 7 times 2x is negative 14x. And negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. Then if we combine our like terms together here, negative 14x and negative 14x add to negative 28x. So our product then would be 4x squared minus 28x plus 49. You'd get that same answer too. If you were to set up a box and do the 2x minus 7 on each side of your box, like that, you would still end up with the exact same answer. But if you're comfortable with it and you like the shortcut, we can also use the shortcut formula for the square of a binomial. With 2x minus 7 squared, that means that our a is 2x, and my b, the general formula has a plus sign in it, so here since I have a minus 7, that means my b is negative 7. So now I'm going to put these numbers into the formula, which is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And for a squared, we have, let's see, 2x squared plus 2ab, that's 2 times 2x times b, which is negative 7, and then plus negative 7 squared. And now when we go and simplify that here, remember that 2x squared means 2x times 2x, so that's 4x squared. Here, if we multiply the numbers, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. So I have negative 28x, and then negative 7 squared is just negative 7 times negative 7, which is positive 49. So our product then would be 4x squared minus 28x plus 49. Same answer that we got with FOIL. It's also the same answer that we'd get if we used the box method. Here's a quick try now problem for you to try on your own. When you do these problems for the try now, you can use any of the methods. If you wanna use the shortcut formulas for square of a binomial or product of a sum and a difference, you can do that. If you wanna use the FOIL method, you can do the FOIL. Or if you wanna use the box method, you can do the box method. So you just pick the method that makes the most sense to you. Please pause your video now and give this problem a try. Okay, here are your solutions, and I showed each problem a few different ways. The first way that I did this square of a binomial problem was using our shortcut formula. a plus b squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. I plugged my numbers in and got 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Now, you could also have done this with the FOIL method or the box method. If you're doing FOIL, you would just need to write it out twice as 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1 and then do your FOIL, or if you do a box method and you have a binomial squared, both sides of your box are just going to be the same thing. So here I put 3x plus 1 on each side of my box, then I did my multiplication and ended up with 9x squared. These two combined, 3 plus 3 is 6, so plus 6x plus 1. Um, on number 2, I again started off with my formula. This is the product of a sum and a difference. It's just written out of order, so the difference comes first, the sum comes second. It's the same thing. A is 4x, B is 11, so plugging those into our formula A squared minus B squared, we end up with 4x squared minus 11 squared, which simplifies to 16x squared minus 121. I also did it down here with the FOIL method and did my multiplication and saw that the middle terms here of 44x and negative 44x cancel each other out, leaving me with no x term, and then the minus 121 stays. If you make a box for that one, you will also get the same answer. 
The last thing we have to look at today is how to multiply a binomial with a trinomial. Now the FOIL pattern, the F, O, I, and L, only works for binomials times binomials, but if you just extend the pattern with the arrows, you can use it for a binomial times a trinomial. It's also fine too if you wanna just use the box method. I find that a lot of students prefer the box method when it comes to a binomial times a trinomial. I'll show you though with the FOIL pattern. Again, I'm not really going to call it FOIL because it's, it's not totally FOIL, but it's just like distributing over and over again. So if I start at my first term, 2x squared times 3x, we can multiply 2x squared times 3x squared, 2 times 3 is 6, and x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Then go one more time, 2x squared times 1 is 2x squared again. Then if I move to my next term in my first polynomial, now I'm distributing the 3x times everything in the second parenthesis. So I need 3x times 3x squared, which is going to be 3 times 3, that's 9. And then x to the first times x to the second makes x to the third. Then if we take 3x times 1, that's going to be 3x. Now I can move to my last term, negative 4, and again I'm going to distribute that through. So negative 4 times 3x squared is going to be negative 12x squared. And negative 4 times 1 is going to be negative 4. Now we just want to combine the like terms and make sure that our answer is written in standard form. So that biggest exponent should come first. Let's start with 6x to the fourth. Then I can see I only have 1x to the third term, so that's going to come next at 9x to the third. Then there are two different x squared terms. So I have 2x squared and negative 12x squared. 2 minus 12 is negative 10, so negative 10x squared. And then we have a 3x and a negative 4. So that right there is our final answer. Now, I know that gets a little bit messy when you're trying to do the FOIL pattern with the product of a binomial and a trinomial. So this problem could also be done going back to the box method that we talked about in day one. You can just make yourself a rectangle, put the 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 on the top, put the 3x squared times 1 on the side, and then do your multiplication. 3x squared times 2x squared would make 6x squared for our first box. Then 3x squared times 3x, we do 3 times 3, that's 9. And then x squared times x is x cubed. And then finally, 3x squared times negative 4 would make negative 12x squared. Then I can move down to my next row. I have a 1 times a 2x squared, which is 2x squared. 1 times 3x is 3x, and 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Then you can see here there's only two like terms, and whoops, I meant to write x to the fourth here in this first box. Let me fix that. There we go. 3x squared times 2x squared is 6x to the fourth. Well, now when I combine my like terms, there's only two like terms there, the x squareds. Everything else just stays as is. So we have 6x to the fourth plus 9x to the third. You can take the negative 12 and the 2 and add those together to make negative 10x squared. Then I have a positive 9x to the third. And then a negative 4 on the end. So same answer both ways. Let's try one more example with a binomial times a trinomial. This time the binomial is in front, which I like better if I'm going to use the FOIL pattern. So now I have my x times my 4x squared, which is 4x to the third. Then x times negative x would be negative x squared. And then x times 7 is 7x. Then when I move to the next row, I'm going to just line my like terms up here. So negative 3 times 4x squared would be negative 12x squared. 
negative 3 times negative x would be positive 3x. And negative 3 times 7 would be negative 21. Now we can combine our like terms here. 4x cubed, and then I have a negative 1x squared and a negative 12x squared, which makes negative 13x squared. 7x plus 3x is 10x, and then we have the minus 21 there on the end. So that is my final answer using the FOIL pattern. But again, if that pattern is confusing, which I think it gets a little messy sometimes with binomials and trinomials, you could also just make yourself a box, make it a three by two, and then do your multiplication that way. So here I'm setting up my box. And now if we start to do our multiplication here, for the first box, we would have x times 4x squared, which is 4x to the third. x times negative x is negative x squared. Then x times 7 is 7x. Moving down to the next row, I have negative 3 times 4x squared, which is negative 12x squared. Negative 3 times negative x is positive 3x. And negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. You can see here there's two sets of like terms. I'm going to actually circle them right here in my chart. I have a negative 1x squared and a negative 12x squared, which makes the negative 13x squared. So we have 4x to the third minus 13x squared. And then I have another set of like terms here with 7x and 3x. 7 plus 3 is 10, so plus 10x. And then I have my minus 21 on the end. So again, you'll see that you get the same answer both ways. You decide which method you like the best for a binomial and a trinomial. Most students in past years have preferred the box method when it comes to a binomial times a trinomial. But if you're comfortable with the foil pattern, drawing your arrows, go right ahead and use that. Either way, you can see you get the same answer. So this concludes Lesson 6.5, Day 2. Thanks for watching, and good luck as you try some problems on your own. Bye!